I love this picture of Newton. <laughs> you don't understand the gravity of the situation. So we're going to talk about orbital mechanics. It's something that sounds really complicated, but it's actually pretty straightforward when you really think about it. Um, well, hopefully at least that'll be the case. So let's talk about an orbit. Remember what it means to be an orbit, right? It means that you have an object that's gravitationally attracted to this other object. Uh, they're both attracted to each other, so they both orbit a common uh, central mass. It's not that the heavy one just stays still, right? They, they both move a little bit and they both wobble. But we're going to consider just the one that's orbiting around. So that's what we call it a satellite. A satellite is anything that goes around. Um, so for example, the moon is a satellite of the Earth. So in an orbit, a satellite of mass M, that's a little mass right here, it's going around a planet of mass capital M and has an orbital radius of R. Now, keep in mind, we're going to assume that the orbits are circular. Kepler, a long, long time ago, in the 1600s, he figured out they're not circular, actually, they're elliptical. Uh, but we don't need to know that for the IB, where you can sort of skip that. But in real life, just so you know, orbits are actually not circular, they're uh, elliptical. And then we talk about ellipticity, sort of how, how sort of egg-shaped it is kind of thing, or how elliptical it is. So you can have a special case for an ellipse is to make it a circle. So we're going to consider nice, simple circles. The good news is it's very close to the, what the real math needs to be for ellipses. So let's talk about the kinetic energy first, in general, for anything that's in orbit. Well, the kinetic energy in orbit, I hope you see, it's just, it's really simple. It's just the equation you know. E k equals half mv squared. Nothing brain busting there. Now, the potential energy in orbit may not be so easy. You might think, oh, it's mgh, right? That's only on Earth at the surface of the Earth. So that's why you have to look up in your data booklet, where's the equation for potential energy? If you look uh, past another video, I showed you it. But the potential energy equation goes like this. It's minus GMM over R. You find that one in your data book. It's on the right side under uh, fields. So um, if you look at this, there it is. Okay, fine. Let's look at uh, maybe a graph of each of these then. Let's maybe do those. So we'll do a graph of uh, EK. Actually, just wait a second. What I'm going to try to do, let's see if I can do these in different colors. If I don't mess it all up. No, I think it's going to mess it up. Oh, well. So what I'll do is I'll draw the uh, kinetic energy with respect to R. Now, this is, going to be, this is going to be the actual surface of the planet. Okay, so let's say you start off here. Let's do it realistic, right? You can't have negative radius uh, around the planet. Let's say you start off at the surface of the planet, and you try to escape that planet. Can you see you're already at this surface right here? You're already there, so you're already at this uh, planet where it starts. And then you go and take off. So you're in an airplane or in a spaceship or something, in, in a rocket, and you have an initial uh, velocity. In this case, it'll be a very large velocity, probably, if you want to leave at least, or you eventually have to get to a large velocity. But in order to uh, orbit around something, the way that the speeds work, it's kind of interesting. It goes like this. Watch, I'll do a drawing of it here. Kinetic energy, at least, will go something like this. So kinetic energy will actually drop down like this right here. This will be E, K. So what does this mean? It means that depending on your orbital radius that you want to have around this planet, um, as you go further and further out, you need less and less uh, kinetic energy in order to do it. So you won't need as much kinetic energy. Uh, in other words, you'll be going slower. Can you see at R equals infinity? Imagine you go R like all the way to the end of the universe. Uh, can you see that you technically have then no kinetic energy? If that makes any sense? Uh, but you start off with some kinetic energy because you're clearly, you know, you have to be moving in order to do something. So I hope that makes sense. This graph goes like this. It's not super intuitive uh, because here we don't have an equation with R. We have an equation with V. But hopefully you see this is the case. Potential energy, however, that one should be straightforward enough. We have R in it. And remember, it goes uh, potential energy is 1 over R and it's negative. And a graph of 1 over R would go like this. So negative would flip. That's not quite symmetric, okay? This one here is actually more negative. I don't know if that makes any sense. This one here, this is uh, EP here, because it goes just like the uh, gravitational potential. The potential energy does what the gravitational potential does. So keep in mind then the total energy, how would I find that? I hope you know ET is just EK plus EP. So in this case right here, let's add them up. So I have M, oh, half MV squared. Plus, but I'm adding a negative number, so negative GMM over R, uh, just not R squared, but just R. This is the equation for total energy. 
What does that mean you do here if we want to do the graph of it? Because you could be asked this on an exam as well. Um, it's not going to be zero. Like I said, the potential is more negative than the kinetic is. So in other words, they don't just cancel out. Actually, the total energy goes somewhere in the middle, goes somewhere like that. So this is ET. And this suffices, this is enough for exams. So if you're asked to do a plot of these different things, this is how each of them goes. It's not super intuitive, right? You'd think the total energy should be positive, but like I said, the negative potential energy is caused by the negative gravitational potential, which we defined as, uh, you know, zero at infinity, which means it has to get less as you get closer. So that's a little interesting little thing here. Let's go to the next one. Escape velocity. This one I love. Because if you want to leave a system's gravitational field, I mean completely. Whoops, I didn't mean to say yo need. I realized I had a spieling mistake. This is just like, all right, so at least I may as well fix it right here. So you need to go to a distance of infinity. So if you want to actually completely leave the gravitational field, you got to get to a distance of, you know, the end of the universe or whatever. So at infinity, we define the total energy to be zero. This is the key part right here, okay? That's the part you need. Whoops. I'll do undo for that. What I meant to do was start drawing in green here. So what I would say then is ET equals zero. So here's how we can actually find the escape velocity, okay? Well, it's the minimum speed you need to go in order to reach this distance of infinity. And this is the key stipulation we say. We say the total energy equals zero. Well, remember again, the total energy is just a kinetic plus the potential. I'm just figuring it out again, just to show you. Uh, if I need to know the kinetic, well, I know it's half mv squared. If I need to know the potential energy, I can look it up in my data booklet and it's negative gmm over r. That's just what ep is, and it's negative. Well, then if I set et equals zero, you see that? I'm just going to show you all the steps just to show you the derivation. It's not that hard, though. But uh, you see, now I can move the gmm over r maybe to the other side. So now I have gmm over r. That equals 1 half mv squared. So you have to just move that whole term over. Luckily, the m's cancel out. That's kind of nice. And I want to get v squared by itself. So I'm going to put the 2 on top. So I'm going to have 2gm over r. And that's going to equal v squared. So if I want to get v by itself, it's technically plus or minus, but we'll just consider the positive version. This is the equation for escape velocity or escape speed. So if you want this one right here, I would uh, maybe even label it with a little escape like ESC. It tells you how fast do you have to go in order to completely leave a gravitational body's influence. For example, on Earth, if you put in the mass of the Earth and the radius of the Earth, you get something along the order of uh, 11 kilometers per second. So, for example, on Earth, that's what it is. So that means if you want to completely leave the Earth, you got to go something like seven, uh, 11 kilometers per second, which is crazy fast, right? In one second, you got to go that fast. Well, yeah, that's to completely leave. I don't mean that to get into orbit around the Earth. There you can have lots of smaller, uh, slower orbits. This is the speed you need to leave Earth, to go somewhere else. For example, oh, I don't know, Mars or wherever else you want to go. Okay, that's the escape velocity. You need this to get to infinity, basically. You could have less, like I said, uh, to be in orbit. This is roughly what you need to escape the Earth. Pretty cool. Uh, finally, we've got the orbital speed. We've kind of done this before in the SL portion, but let's let's do it again here. So we have a satellite of mass M, and it's orbiting a central mass, capital M again. Um, and we're going to consider the orbital speed. To do this, what we have to do is just consider the forces. Remember that you've got a gravitational force between the small mass and a large mass. So that's given by GMM over R squared. You can look that one up, right? That's at the bottom of that topic. And then, uh, because it's going in a circle, you have a centripetal force. And that centripetal force is mv squared over r. You can find that in um, another chapter from the SL core. Then if we consider this then, well, the centripetal force is caused by the gravitation. So that's where we set fg equal to fc. Therefore, we get gmm over r squared equals mv squared over r. The little m's cancel out. And this R right here, if I bring it up to the top, that R will cancel out that one. So there we go. And we're left with, um, let's see here, V squared equals GM over R. Um, now what I think is really interesting, do you notice, by the way, it was different than this right here? Look, there was a 2 here. So it's not the same. Escape velocity came from kinetic plus potential being 0. 
Okay, it's very, very different. Do you notice there's a two here? I know it looks the same, but it's not quite the same. So therefore, the orbital speed then will just be, just take the square root of that. So it'd be g m over r. This would be the orbital speed. And you're given this on your data booklet as well, so you don't have to memorize this. But I think it's a good idea to know how to get to it, right? This is your orbital speed. So this tells you how fast you have to go in order to be at an orbit of r from the center of the mass here. So you got to be very, very careful. If they ask you, what is it from the surface? You have to subtract one r from whatever your uh, radius is that you're looking at. So you just got to be a little bit careful there. This is technically from the center of the object. So again, if you want to find out your orbital speed, depends on uh, what you're doing here. But if you wanted to actually do this, what you can do is say, all right, here's the orbital speed at, from any given radius. So you can maybe, you know, do it over here, maybe to some point right here. You just calculate, all right, well, that's, that's going to be the R here that you're going to put in is the R from the center of the object. That's the value you're going to put into this equation. Put in the mass of that body, put in capital G, which you can look up, 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11, and away you go. You got your orbital speed.